All right, now let's go on to the detail pass on our rock structure. We're nearly done. So to do this, we're going to be sculpting using these alphas and these stencils right here. And for this, I'm not a huge fan of working uh, on this stage and doing the details in the surface mode because the surface tools are significantly more sensitive than the voxel tools. So I'm going to convert this back into a voxel object now that we've used uh, the angulator and the surface noise which are only available in surface mode we're going to change this back into a voxel object and the way you can do that is just here in the vox tree just click on the s and it'll ask you um, how many polygons do you want your new voxel object to have so in order to preserve a lot of the details and the sharpness we got here we want to make sure that this number is greater than the current object triangles, which in this case it is. So I'm going to hit OK. All right, and now we're back in voxel mode. So I'm just going to use the uh, build brush for most of this. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go at it with a, uh, a stencil pass. And the way that works is you'll just use one of these stencils that they've provided. So there's a lot of these, and these are just uh, like kind of overlays that looks like a solid color. I'll pick a different one, like say this one. And you see how these are just overlays, and the way they work is that you'll only sculpt where the stencil is white, so see that? So instead of that abstract pattern, I'm going to load up, load up a custom stencil that I brought in, this one, which is just a black and white image of a cliff face, which I think is very appropriate here. And we're just going to start sculpting in certain areas. May actually help to be at a slightly higher resolution for this. So I'm going to go to my resample. I don't quite want to do a res plus because then that will up the triangle count to about 12 million, which I don't want. So I'm going to resample it to about 10 million. and give it a few seconds to do just that. All right, we're good, we're done. So now we can sculpt a little bit, and as you see, our arch right there says 3x next to it. So you see when we sculpt now, we're getting that nice surface detail. So like right here, for instance, I want kind of this section of the stencil to be overlaid onto this part of the object. So I'm going to grab these little arrows up here. I'm just going to drag it down. And then maybe rotate it a little bit. There we go. Change this back to 5% so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to use a very low brush strength with very low uh, pen pressure on my tablet. And just kind of add that in. Just like that. Might do that to a couple other areas. So I'll increase this say 10% to help me see. And I can also scale it using the magnifying glass. I might make it a bit bigger, drag it over, and then start sculpting. So you want to be intelligent about how you do this. And you want to make sure that the... Oh, oh gosh. Okay. You want to make sure that uh, you're being intelligent about what parts of the stencil you're putting on which parts of your model. You don't want it to be random because otherwise the surface detail may not line up very well with the uh, sculpted... Uh, detail, you know, with the larger forms. So you want to rotate your stencil to sort of match with the contours of what you're sculpting. So I might do that, just that right here. And maybe rotate it, sculpt them. I'll go up top here and just kind of sculpt that in a little bit. And I'm not sculpting this everywhere. I don't want all of the different areas to have this same kind of detail. Just want it to be a little bit more random. Now something else you can do, like here where it's kind of bent, so if I increase the opacity so I can see a bit better, we can change from paint to distortion and that actually will let us kind of warp the stencil and we can use that to make it line up with our model a bit better. 
So now we've done that. 5% go back to painting. And you see how that kind of follows that contour. It may look a little stretched, but don't worry, we can clean that up later. And then we also can clear the distortion if we don't want the stencil to be distorted anymore. Again, just brushing very, very lightly here. Not trying to make too drastic of a change. Might scale it down a bit, rotate it, pan it. Okay, that was, that was a bit strong. There we go. And that's how you'll be applying stencils. Now another um, tool we're going to use is we're going to use some of the brush alphas with our uh, build brush. So I go to the defaults and there's a lot here to choose from. There's a lot of uh, sort of cracked alphas. So if I click on like one of these up here, maybe this one, and then it should be able to draw on that. Let me try a different one that might show up better. There we go. So you see those are very strong. Don't quite want that. So I'm going to decrease their strength. And then also want to hold down control so that the tool is uh, inverted and we get some nice cracks in there. And you can import your own images using the, uh, the new uh, button down there. And if you don't want to be holding down control all the time, you can also check on invert tool. Now while I'm brushing to do this, I'm going to just bring my brush around. You can also use a different uh, stroke mode, which is this, these four arrows, that's just the stamp setting. And what that does is that allows you just to drag out a single instance of that alpha. So I might pick a different crack just to mix it up a bit. Now when you do that, it becomes independent of your brush pressure, of your tablet pressure. Sorry. So you probably will have to reduce the strength a bit. As you see, I've got some nice cracks going. Maybe make it a bit larger for down here. There we go. That's working. Just like that. And there are some other alphas. Like if I pick one down here, I, that's kind of like several rough lines. And I turn on the standard stroke mode. Then what I can do is I can oh, come on, maybe increase the strength a bit. There we go. And you see what I can do is I using these multiple lines. Hopefully you can see the alpha there pretty clearly. Yeah. Then I can carve in several lines at once. Some, you know, kind of like erosion marks or something of that nature. And with this brush, if I go into my brush options, I have rotate along stroke turned on, which is why the lines kind of follow the direction that I'm brushing. I can pick a different style of crack and you know, make some sort of softer cracks. And Maybe put a nice big one down here towards the bottom. Yeah, a couple like that, maybe. And then you can also use some of these rougher alphas, like, you know, one that looks a little bit more like some splatters. And you can really start to rough it up that way. I'm going to recommend against doing something like this, though, because when we do the texture painting, we're going to uh, paint in a new normal map that will add in these really really fine details like that. So yeah that's all you need to know for doing detail pass using these alphas and the stencils. Uh, in the next video we will get on to retopology.